KD Light. Man, boy, is it bright. You know, periodically, which means every once in a while, we need to get a haircut, shave, do those things that, because of growth, in order to appear or look or be more presentable to each other, to God, to one another, we take the time to cut, as it were, the new growth so that we can style it and look better than what we would if we just let it grow wild. In our modern era, we have more of a let it grow mentality than we do of a pruning and concern for bearing precious fruit. And because of a growth and exponential excitement over the internet, smartphones, the ability to blog, to post, to tweet, to text, to share those thoughts that are on our mind in a non-disciplined way, we have a lot of wild growth going on, which is, just like Jesus said, the wheat would grow with the tares. And there's a lot of good and great and even potentially wonderful things that grow, like my neck, that could be used by God to produce much fruit. So he prunes it. Now, some people are really into their bodies and, you know, they shave off every hair they have on their head and do all those things. And I've had a wide variety of appearances with beards and long hair and just recently shaved it all off. And my wife was shocked when I shaved it all off because she didn't recognize me. <laughs> Not because I had such great long hair, but that once I had cut it back to this close to the head of being bald, that my appearance seemed different. And she would say the personality had changed. Well, no, just the perception of it. And a lot of times that's what we make the mistake of, is that in growth and in being pruned, we mistake what the perception is as opposed to what God is doing. God sees the plant and is the gardener. And so he prunes it in order to bear more fruit. And that's what he does in your life. He prunes you and me through our devotionals, through Bible studies, through the church. But the point is, don't forsake those things which God is using in order to prune you. And that can be another person or a point of view that you might not like. Learn from it. Look at it. Examine it. See if it fits in your life or it needs to be applied to your life. Because you can be wild and wooly growing out there on your own but you likewise can be bearing much fruit for the kingdom of God if you'll allow his pruning and his discipline and his structure to come into you. Today, in devotional, that's what we do. We give it structure by just simply asking God to show us the way in a devotional way with our emotions. The younger son took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance with riotous living. Such were some of you, but you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. We were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved and hath raised us up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Herein is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. God commendeth his love towards us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. If then we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And you know, that's pretty amazing, you know? 
because frankly I could see what we normally see around us as pretty disgusting and yet God loves us. I could see lots of reasons to take up the sword and say let us do things in the name of the Lord but rarely do I see how God views wanting to bring salvation to even those with whom we would cry out damnation. That amazes me. That causes me to want to change to be more like Jesus and more like God my Father who allowed not only his son to volunteer to go but then caused him to pay the full price for our sins. As Christ forgave you, so also do ye. There was a certain creditor which had two debtors. The one owed 500 pence and the other 50. And when he had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. I forgave thee all that debt. Shouldst thou not also have compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? When you stand praying, forgive. If ye have aught against any, then your Father also which is in heaven may forgive your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses. Put on, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, forgive him. How often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Till seven times? Jesus saith unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Charity is the bond of perfectedness. <laughs> what more can you say? Do it, you're forgiven. Don't, you are. Forgiveness doesn't mean you don't see the wrong. It doesn't mean you know the wrong, and it doesn't mean you haven't been wrong. Forgiveness means you are fully cognizant of the situation, aware of the determination. You feel it, you see it, you hurt from it, and yet God says, I agree. That may be true, and it probably is. But he says, do one thing more, because I, the Lord thy God, am a righteous judge. I don't ask you to create condemnation for the person who needs forgiveness. I say to you, forgive, and you will be forgiven. There's nothing that anyone has against you, or I have against anyone, that can't be forgiven by the fact that Jesus died on the cross for them. When we realize that, we can accept one another in love based upon what Jesus did and not what we feel. It's a tough road, I'll admit, it's a struggle. But you know, you take it with a sense of humor, you laugh about it, you think about it, you pray about it, and you ask God to take over, and you get through it. Because God is pruning you today in his daily life.